It's time to look at uh, stories making headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And joining me now on Skype from Abiokuta is journalist and media consultant Ifekayode Akimbodi. Uh, Ifekayode, nice to have you join me right now. Good morning, Mike. How are you today? Good morning. We're fine here. All right. And in the studio, strategy consultant and public affairs analyst Dikbo Oyewole. Dikbo, good morning. Good morning, Mike. I hope you're safe and good. Yes, good. And <laughs> you? I'm very fine. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you. All right, let's begin with Daily Times newspaper. Daily Times says, revocation of land titles looms in the FCT. That's the Daily Times newspaper there, taking us, from, uh, taking us to Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. From Daily Times, let's go to the Blueprint newspaper. COVID-19, Nigeria records 3,600 cases of rape during the lockdown. That is troubling. A PTF warns government officials, corporate entities, on physical meeting to open testing centers in 774 local government areas cautions against uh, unnecessary travels political gatherings okay all that is there on the front page of the blueprint newspaper all right N news direct is next now and it says from covid 19 no international flight yet domestic passengers to arrive 90 minutes before departure. That's the federal government is saying that. It's been reduced now from uh, three hours to one hour, 30 minutes. For If you're traveling domestically, uh, you have to get to the airport at least uh, one hour, 30 minutes, so you can get through the protocols before you, you're bored. Airborne spread of coronavirus is possible. The NCDC is warning, so everyone has to check this. That is why face masks are very important. All right, uh, from there, let's go to Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspaper, federal government scrambles for oxygen as COVID-19 deaths rise and 70 people die in one week. Nigeria needs 10,000 respirators. Experts are saying this, and coronavirus now airborne. The presidential task force is uh, warning on this. And 35 doctors infected in Quara State. That's really uh, sad there. I must say. Okay, from there, let's go to uh, uh, leadership newspaper. The leadership newspaper says coronavirus grounds activities in government houses. Uh, some government offices remain shut and no hope of return to normalcy anytime soon. WHO is saying there's a rising cases due to denial and delay in seeking help. Federal government is giving these reasons and releases new guidelines for reopening of schools. And Nigeria records 3,600 rape cases during the lockdown. We can't rule out airborne transmission of virus. The NCDC is revealing this. So it's warning from all sides for safety to be taken and precaution. National economy is the last paper we're looking at now. Wearing face masks can speed up Nigeria's economic recovery. Experts are saying this, so you need to grab a copy to get details of how uh, wearing face masks can translate to economic recovery. You need to see uh, what that is so everyone can get the tip, uh, tips on that. That's the national economy. All right, let's, uh, let's get to our story. There's this story here that will, uh, the story on uh, the front page of the Daily Trust that says federal government scrambles for oxygen and, as COVID-19 deaths rise. One thing, there is 70 people who die in one week, and uh, an expert says that Nigeria needs 10,000 respirators right now across the country, not less than 10,000. Okay, uh, let me, let me, if I, Kayode, let me start with you there before I come to Dick Boy in the studio. Now, when it comes to the what is needed, it is obvious, it is clear, it is visible to everyone that the health system within sub-Saharan African countries, Nigeria inclusive, has been very uh, uh, in short supply when it comes to the, the standard of things. But as it is right now, are you seeing some uh, drastic moves being made to ensure that hospitals are equipped and then the makeshift arrangement where we have isolation centers, uh, something tangible can be done where there is an expansion and there's something more permanent. What do you think... Uh, uh, we are not doing right with these numbers going on from where we are right now. Well, good morning once again, Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's a very sad situation that as, as of today, the pandemic started in Nigeria. Sorry, I have a bad voice. And please try it's to... It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We are thinking it started around February in Nigeria and we are in July. The ridiculous situation is that 
the Nigerian egg sector in the last four months, in the last four months, has not done anything meaningful to improve our healthcare facilities. The VIPs are dying daily. And it's not a lesson for Nigerian leaders to do something meaningful. From February to July, we are still scampering for respirators and oxygen. Is that not ridiculous? What do we need to make adequate provision for our health facilities to prevent people from dying daily? Very, very little things, oxygen and respirators. As of today, we are still talking about that. It breaks my heart because it's not like we do not have the resources to get these things. But I cannot actually say this is the problem that we have in this nation. It is not imaginable that in the 21st century, we are still looking for respirators for our hospitals. We are looking for oxygen for our hospitals. Mike is not, I'm not in a good mood this morning. Okay. Sorry, because my voice is bad. No, 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 no problem. Uh, all right, we, we understand you. Dick, well, let me bring it to you in the studio. Now, the point there is, at, at, in fact, it was the coming of uh, COVID-19 that we knew that there, there, are, there are indigenous companies that can produce uh, uh, some of these uh, equipment. Yes. Uh, uh, Innocent Motors, for instance, yes. came up at the time and said, well, of course, we can, we can produce some of these things for hospitals. Mm. There are others here and there who came up who fabricated different uh, modules of, of these and all of that for different hospitals. Yes. How much of that should we take advantage of? I think we should take advantage of everything. Mm. And um, I think it's, it's quite unfortunate that right now in July, like he rightly said, there was this campering mm. around about for, five months uh, after five months the before, first and, case in and, Nigeria. Uh, and I remember vividly mm. that exactly a week before we had an index case, I was on another platform and we were talking about how prepared we were mm. in Nigeria. And um, I was here four days to the index case. I remember very well. We're still talking about it. And it's quite unfortunate that it's the same attitude that we saw back then. Mm. There was the saying now. Our leaders aren't being deliberate about it. You have private organizations that are saying that we can partner with you to get this done. And then you're not taking full advantage of it. So the, the question is, what is your plan? You don't seem to have a plan. I don't see a reason why we should uh, be joking with human life. I've said it here and um, on other platforms that human life is something that we don't take very seriously in this country. And it's quite unfortunate. We've seen in terms of education, the poverty index, insecurity. Now we have our health. In between this whole pandemic, we've had our health budget gutted. I mean, for me, that's, that shows that we're not very serious about getting this done. Because every other nation on the planet, they're trying to see how they can get more money into their health sector to see how they can fight this and kick this out of their nations. A few nations of the world have been able to do that successfully. The question is, why is Nigeria not doing that? What is our challenge exactly? So I think we're not being deliberate enough to see that we get these issues sorted. Mm -hmm. And it's quite unfortunate. All right. Now, uh, if I could, the, the point there is, but before now, we saw uh, so many philanthropists uh, donating monies to the federal government to handle different things. We raised something within the range of over, over 50 billion naira was raised mm. from the figures that we saw uh, that, was made pub that was made public at the time. We raised more than 50 billion naira. And as it is, uh, I wonder if you're concerned with how, because Serap, for instance, uh, one of the uh, 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 independent bodies that call for, you know, uh, the beam searchlight on some of these things, has been out there calling on the federal government to ensure that they make public how these monies are spent so that Nigerians can follow and it, 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 so they can also help them trust what government is doing and trust government in its move. What do you make of all of that from that window? Well, um, Mike, is a Nigerian factor. You hardly could get, you know, people to account for money made and spent. Sarah has done their bit, and I'm, I'm aware of that even in Lagos State, the doctors are warming up to go on strike because, like I heard, their salaries are not being paid. Now, if private individuals and organizations have donated over 50 billion, and nobody has given account of how the money has been spent, and yet 
We are still battling with oxygen, with respirators. Nobody will want to trust the process. Nobody wants to donate anymore. So that is the reason why even the ordinary Nigerians does not believe there's coronavirus. They said it's an avenue for government to make money and to steal. So to get the people to take it by in and have confidence in the affairs of government, we must be plain, we must be accountable, we must be sincere, we must be forthright. So if, as of today, the money made has not been accounted for, we are not seeing results that is commensurate with the money made, I'm afraid that nobody will trust government and donate any further money. Mm. So, like Sarah said, let us know how much has been made. Let us know how much has been said. Let us know the shortfall. Let us know what other people need to do to support the government in the fight against the pandemic. Mm. But today, nobody can know. Everything is stored in secrecy. Doctors try to go on strike. Hospitals are not well equipped. People are dying. And I'm afraid that if Nigeria is not careful, we might be going into a serious crisis that may not occur well for this country. Okay. Uh, Dickbo, the, the, the numbers are increasing. Yeah. And the NCDC as well as WHO at different times have said that uh, we're not close to uh, uh, flattening the curve yet anywhere. No. And uh, if you see from, from on the streets, in fact, in Lagos, for instance, yes. where people are not wearing face masks, those who have it sometimes have it because they feel that if I don't have it, in case I run into a law enforcement agent, for mm -hmm. instance, yes. uh, I could be prosecuted because government has made it mandatory. Yes. So they put just hang it somewhere just in case, uh, just in case, so I can just, you put know, just up. pull it up and then I am safe. Yes. And then the social distancing. Uh, we've seen even viral videos of, of government officials yes. who, whose children or family members have weddings and all of that we see gathering of people mm. we see all of these things mm. now what comes to mind when it comes to what can be done about all of these well for me i would say that it still goes back to the people in government because like you you, you alluded to something i was still going to talk about mm. saying that there are people in the corridors of power who have been having elaborate mm. gatherings in terms of political functions weddings and you name it mm. so for me the common man on the streets will have to look and say that, are you sure that this virus exists? Because these are the people who make the laws. These are the people who have said that it exists and we should keep social distancing. And they're not doing the same. Could it mean that it's all a hoax? Also know that there are a lot of people who have been asking this question all along. And then we have leaders who are setting direct examples because we talked about over 50 billion naira being raised. And then there's no sense of accountability. Now, for another person on the street, he, will say, he or she will say that we've had that kind of money raised, but uh, nothing is being said about it. Is it possible that the virus really doesn't exist? So our people in government should understand that accountability and, lead, and leading by example isn't just about mm -hmm. them getting another term in office. Okay? In this case, it's a public health issue saying that you need to set the right examples for people to know that, yes, this thing is real and it is a clear and present danger. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing right exactly. now. Exactly. Because even you recall that at the beginning of things, yeah. a, a, a Nigerian actress, a celebrity, yes. was charged to court at the time for organizing a, a birthday party in her house. In her house. In her house. Yes. A and was charged to court and given uh, uh, a, fine. A, a fine and punishment and for community service and all of that. We saw all of those. And, and a few days ago, we had an event in the government house. Yeah somewhere in Nigeria, and then there is no investigation, nobody's been prosecuted. So um, with this issue of the law being for the rich and the law mm -hmm. being for the poor and mm -hmm. for, for different people, it really doesn't help. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then it, it, it could also create country. trust crisis for, exactly. uh, for, for the government from the people. All right, let's... All right, let's all right, so let's head straight to the papers now, and I begin with the Daily Times. Revocation of land titles looms in the federal capital territory. And then on the front page of the blueprint, COVID-19, Nigeria records 3,600 cases of rape during lockdown. PTF warns government officials, corporate entities on physical meeting to open testing centers in 774 local governments, cautions against unnecessary travels, political gatherings. All right, we'll be looking at this story uh, shortly.
And then we move to the front page of the News Direct. COVID-19, no international flight yet. Domestic passengers to arrive 90 minutes before departure. Federal government, airborne spread of coronavirus, possible NCDC warns. And on the front page of the Daily Trust now, Federal government scrambles for oxy oxygen as COVID-19 deaths rise. Uh, 70 people die in one week. Nigeria needs 10,000 respirators, experts. Coronavirus now airborne PTF, 35 doctors infected in Quara. And on the front page of the Leadership newspaper, coronavirus grounds activities in government houses. Some government offices remain shut. No hope of return to normalcy anytime soon. WHO, rising cases due to denial, delay in seeking help. And f finally, on the front page of the national economy, wearing face masks can speed up Nigeria's economic recovery. Experts. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, let's look at the story uh, talking about on the front page of the blueprint, an issue that was of major concern to a lot of Nigerians uh, during uh, the lockdown, uh, where we see cases of uh, rape on the rise and uh, like we said a lot of concern because we saw uh, incidents where some of the victims were even killed and i'll begin with you if uh, 3600 cases of rape yet we have uh, the child's right act that is to ensure the protection of uh, children i wonder what you make uh, uh, of this uh, report well veronica this is alarming and this is not african this is not Nigerian. It's becoming really alarming because it's not in a tradition for people to rape. I don't know what has come over our people, maybe because of the lack of the diligence of government and prosecuting and ensuring that people are made scapegoats. Government should put up stringent measures, punitive measures, and ensuring that people are prosecuted and jailed. Because I don't know what. A 60-year-old man who think in defiling a nine-year-old child. Mm. So if we do not make use of our laws in such a manner that it will serve as deterrent to others, I'm afraid things may not work well. Uh, I think because... Let, let, yes. Let's bring in the Adikpo Oyewali now. I really want to understand uh, the use of our laws to uh, uh, as ensure, uh, serving as a deterrent. Is that really the issue? Because um, we've seen perhaps other punishment when we talk about uh, kidnapping and all. We have capital punishment, but we still see you know this on the rise. Is it the effectiveness of the law that is you know at the heart of this? What really exactly is? Yes, I think we need to have a lot more effectiveness or efficiency in terms of implementing our laws in this regard because 3,600 also notes that those are the reported cases. The reported cases. Okay. So in reality, the number could be two, three times more than that, which is clocking 10,000 cases, which for me is very frightening. Now, for me, I would say that, yes, we need a lot more enforcement in terms of the laws. We have the laws. But it is enforcement because when bad behavior goes unpunished, it reinforces that kind of behavior in the heart of the perpetrator. But we, we see that uh, some states had enacted the Child Rights Act, yes. uh, about 24 of them. Yes. Uh, recently, the, the National Assembly had to insist that other states you know, ensure that uh, you know, they get into uh, this and uh, enact this law. But mm. how has those states uh, that, you know, have enforced the Child Rights Act. How, 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 has they, how has it performed? Because we still see cases of rape I in the States. Well, I would say that um, it hasn't been as impressive as we would have hoped. But for me, it's a two-pronged approach. One is in terms of the government with enforcing the law. The, two, uh, the second one is in terms of how we relate with each other. This is what I mean. We need to sensitize families. Because more often than not, the reason why there are more cases that go unreported is because most of the time the perpetrators are people known to the family all mm -hmm. right so they say that oh, okay we want to shield this person or we want to shield the perpetrator or shield the victim or preserve the family dignity which i don't know where that still exists after such an event happens so i think that is where we need to really address these issues but at the same time we also need to understand that when we don't get to see enforcement 
a lot of people aren't encouraged to even come out to speak, mm. which could also be a deterrent for them and also ensures that they don't get justice, which for us as a society, I think it is not good enough. So that's why I'll still throw it back to the government to say that, yes, we need to have more stringent enforcement of our laws. Uh, in fact, idea, another aspect that is of concern to advocates uh, is the aspect of the journey to justice, where we see that um, some those law enforcement do not have a, a budget for investigations into these matters. I wonder how this complicates the issue. You see that. Uh, Oftentimes, the victim has to, you know, spend monies to ensure that uh, they get justice at the end of the day. Well, the Nigerian criminal system is a bit, you know, not so suitable for people to get justice. You know too well that the Nigerian factor comes to play when you go to file your complaint with the police. Sometimes you are made to pay through your nose to get them to follow you to arrest the suspects. And in terms of prosecution, you also know that maybe with the exception of AKT and Ogu State, who has done tremendously well in the area of getting justice for rape victims, all other states have not done convincing enough to ensure that those who are raped get justice. Not only about rape, the criminal justice system in Nigeria is not sufficiently good enough for people to get justice. You know that from prosecution, you no, know, from arrest to complaint to prosecution, it's fraught with irregularities and it's so strenuous that sometimes you get tired along the line. And then I said that we will reappraise a um, criminal justice system that will not make it too cumbersome to get justice. I'm afraid that rape victims might not get justice in the country. And what could that uh, spiral into? What could be the spillover effect of that? Well, just like um, your, my colleague in the studio said, if you do not make stringent punitive measures, this thing will continue unabated. Mm. And that may lead to a serious crisis. Mm. So we need to ensure, governors, lawmakers need to ensure that we continuously make laws and effectively put into use those laws in collaboration with the law enforcement agencies so that those who are caught are not only paraded and the matters are under the carpet, but are punished and sent to jail so that others who are planning to do will learn a lesson from that and to serve as a deterrent to others. All right, uh, Dickbo, now the final question, uh, which has to do with the role of parents. You see some victims find it difficult communicating uh, uh, th this event to their families. Yes. They believe that their p parents may not trust them because of the persons involved. Mm. What would you advise moving forward? Well, I would say that parents should be a lot more open-minded um, in terms of how we relate with our children, okay? Because it isn't just until when something bad happens that they should be able to relate to us even when they have good news. Even some people are afraid to share good news with their parents because mm -hmm. they will say they don't know how they would react to it. I think parents should be a lot more open-minded and have some level of trust, especially when this issue arises. Find ways to investigate and ensure that your children are safe. Boys, girls, they all get raped today, right. which is quite unfortunate. Gentlemen, Dick Boyewole, Fekayode, gentlemen, thank you for your time thank on you for the me. breakfast show this morning.